Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi again. Uh, my name is Mehdi Rashigi. This is my pleasure to have the opportunity to give this presentation today with Dr. Hamed Ekhtiari. Uh, the, the topic that we are going to talk about today is neurodermatology and dual psychosis uh, with a specific uh, uh, focus on delusions of parasitosis. This is our disclosure slide, so we do not have any actual or potential conflict of interest in relation to this presentation. So uh, I'm a physician scientist and a dermatologist at UMass Chan Medical School in Massachusetts, United States. And my name is Hamad Ekhtiari. I'm a physician scientist, neuroscientist by training, working at Lourdes Institute for Brain Research. I also have a small lab with medical discovery team on addictions in the University of Minnesota. I'm also co-chair of neuroscience section at the International Society for Addiction Medicine. So what we're gonna talk about in, in clinical practice in addiction medicine, you know that we, usually faced with three major dermatological syndromes. First, I mean, those who are alcohol users and they have cholestasis-based pruritus, that is one of the things that we usually see in the clinical practice of addiction medicine. But the second one would be pruritus that could be related to opioid use, which is, could be an acute pruritus or chronic pruritus. And also the third one would be what we call delusional parasitosis. And this is gonna be the topic that we are gonna talk about, which is called in some cases, cocaine bugs or, or, or med bugs. So this is a schematic, a, a broad view of the classification of psychodermatologic disorders as we dermatologists think about it. So essentially the main distinction is that whether the patient has a primary skin disease or everything is self-inflicted. And things that they are self-inflicted, essentially uh, there are disorders, either psychiatric or organic disorders that they can cause itching and cause the patient to, to scratch the skin and cause skin damage. So more specifically today, we are gonna talk about delusions of parasitosis. So this is a typical case of a patient. Uh, on, on the left side, you see a patient with the history of cocaine abuse who comes to clinic and is complaining about having uh, recurrent bites uh, on the skin. Uh, what we see in exam is that this patient has multiple excoriated and encrusted papules on dorsal hands, forearms, and patient might be convinced that this is related to some sort of infestation. Uh, but there is nothing specific in exam that can help me to make that diagnosis. On the right, what you see is that sometimes we see patients that they have secondary skin diseases uh, induced by, by a scratching of the skin. Some areas of the body, specifically mid-back, that they cannot easily reach out, those areas are spared. So it can help us to make the diagnosis of a secondary skin disease, but still this is not specific for delusion of parasitosis. Uh, more commonly, uh, as we see in the next slide, uh, this is the clue that makes us essentially suspect the diagnosis of delusion of parasitosis, what has been historically described as a matchbox sign, uh, but more, more generally now we call it as a specimen sign. So patient uh, use a container to collect debris and, and, and some, some uh, dirt and, and fibers. Uh, they, they are uh, convinced that these are essentially the bugs that they have been able to capture and collect it and they bring it to the clinic and they insist the dermatologists to put them under the microscope and fully examine them. Okay, as you can see here in this slide, we have one case with uh, meth-induced uh, delusional parasitosis, the patient who was trying to basically hunt the, the mites with cigarette fires. As you can see here, there are kind of new burns, and also older burns. One interesting thing about those who are, I mean, they have a higher association or sort of causal relationship between substance use and, and delusional parasitosis is that they have, usually have a higher level of awareness in terms of the, the causation. And sometimes even they associate their, their delusional parasitosis to substance use disorder, which is not unusual for those who have lower level of insight regarding their, their delusions. In terms of the, the clinical presentation, we, we know that there are some overlap between uh, substance-induced psychosis and schizophrenia. And there are some, some overlap, but there are some symptoms that are not fully overlapping. One of the things that would be interesting is that, I mean, things like tactile hallucination, is pretty much usual in the substance use uh, induced psychosis, not very much in the schizophrenia. And from 100 patients who are experiencing meth use disorder, something like eight to 10 of them experience tactile hallucination, which could be a, a, a major component of what we call delusional parasitosis. In terms of the clinical practice in dermatology, uh, there's a study that they basically asked dermatologists how common it is for them to see a patient with uh, 
the delusional parasitosis. And as you can see here, something like 85% of them reported that they at least had one case in their, their clinical practice. And 20% of them reported that they already have a patient that are treating for delusional parasitosis. So this is not very rare kind of clinical condition in, in the clinical practice. And it might be interesting, in the same study, they realized that something like 11% of these people would receive antipsychotic medications in, in their treatment, which shows that dermatologists, people like Mehdi, they are not that much interested to give people antipsychotic medications. In terms of the, the neuroscience basis of, of this disorder, we know that things like skin crawling are considered as sort of defensive responses that we already have. So we, we develop these sort of feelings when we have, even without any, any actual stimuli outside, we can have those, those, those feelings now over our skin, but technically we ignore them. But the dopaminergic hypersalience that would be attributed to these kind of uh, stimuli when people are using drugs, there could be an involvement of salience network and involvement of salience network could make these sort of feelings towards being a, a delusion. There are models for that. Uh, just making them simpler to, to understand, I can say that the feeling of parasitosis could be initiated because of the perturbed dopaminergic activities in, in midbrain. And then this feeling could be boosted over time. And then they, it could be maintained towards having what we call delusional parasitosis. So in terms of medical workup and diagnosis, so the differential diagnosis is very broad, again, because there are no specific uh, clinical findings, and that includes many cases of primary skin disease or cases with secondary skin disease related to metabolic endocrine or neurologic disorders. Uh, so it's, it's very broad range of differential diagnosis. And as you see in the next slide, essentially, the, there is a whole range of uh, test that we might be able to do, but uh, please note that uh, the, 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 the delusion of parasitosis is, uh, for the most part, uh, the diagnosis of exclusion. So what we are trying to do with all these tests is that to rule out other possibilities, except for the serum and urine toxicology. But we should also remember that uh, even if serum or urine tox is positive, that would not necessarily exclude the possibility of having a primary skin disease or secondary skin disease unrelated to substance use disorder. In terms of the management and treatment, there is a five steps pathway that is being developed in the University of California, San Francisco. In the phase one, we just get prepared how we are going to manage the the meeting and conversation with the patient. In the phase two, it's really important for us to develop a positive rapport with the patient. Being able to let patients speak first and then asking them about the, the effects of the condition on their daily life and then affirming the level of stress that people would face with these, these conditions and also defining the expectations that we have in, 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 the, treat, in the treatment in terms of we are going to be focused the symptoms, not the main cause of, of the problem. And then doing the workup that Mehdi mentioned in terms of the excluding other, other conditions, and then think about how we can start antipsychotic medications with a focus to the symptom relief, not kind of, agree, kind of agreeing or arguing about the, the biological causes of, of the symptoms, and then maintenance treatment for some like three, four months when the patient would get stabilized. In terms of the kind of making a conclusion or, or taking home notes, the limited amount of time that we had together with METI, we should say that, as we discussed, delusional parasitosis is the diagnosis of exclusion something like 60% of the patients would have underlying conditions. It's really important for us to make sure that we are not going to miss those underlying conditions. There is a high prevalence of substance use disorder, but sometimes it's really hard to make a causation between substance use disorder and delusional parasitosis. So that is the reason sometimes we use the dual diagnosis uh, for, for that. And then there are two peaks for that, one peak in the sixth decade, one peak in the third decade, and the third decade peak would be more related to substance use disorder. As we have mentioned, people with substance use disorder usually have a higher level of awareness about the, the disease and the nature of the disease. And it's also important that we are not going to agree or argue about the delusion itself, which is not going to be helpful in, in terms of the treatment. Yeah, and, and as Hamid mentioned, essentially, it's very important to, to make that therapeutic alliance with the patient. And uh, next, Hamid. So essentially, there are a range of like medications uh, that... Uh, they, they, they could play a role uh, besides the dopaminergic medications. Uh, and, and this is a kind of multidisciplinary approach uh, in terms of how to, to treat the patient in an optimal way. 
And, and, and the treatment could be challenging because most patients, they do not have insight and most dermatologists do not feel comfortable prescribing antipsychotics. Uh, with that, we are going to finish up the talk and we would be happy to answer if there are any questions. Thank you very much and have a nice day.